All right, it might seem like school just started without a doubt, but juniors and seniors should be already thinking and planning about college. You know you need to take the ACT, the SAT, but what else should you be doing right now? Joining me now is Ryan Riggs. He is the Director of College Counseling at Episcopal School of Jacksonville. Good morning to you. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Jen. We Thanks also posted me. some questions on Facebook, which we're going to share and get some answers to in a minute. But first of all, I know you hear from not just the students, but a lot from the parents as well, as we all are trying to get yes. our kids to start thinking about this because it really you can't procrastinate no so let's talk about some of you you actually sent me the top four questions that parents are usually asking sure. okay since most of the kids are in school by now right so parents are watching how many colleges should my child apply to we always recommend don't put all your eggs in one basket uh, some students just want to apply to one college and just hope they get in and that's a really bad idea um, they really should apply to four, five, six different schools, some schools they may not get into, some schools that are in the middle that are likely, and then some schools that are kind of sure things, because then they have a wide variety, they have options, they have choices, and that's always a good thing. It's interesting, too, because, you know, they, there may be that one school, like just University of Florida, they really want to attend to, they could always apply early decision, correct? Well, uh, every school has different decision plans, ah. in that some schools have a binding early decision plan. Other schools just let you apply early. Ah. So it just depends. Every college is different. Uh, and, and that's the difficulty in the admissions process is no two schools have a plan the exact same. Oh, which makes it difficult because you have to make that decision early on then if you apply and get in, that's where you have to go. Exactly. Okay, the second big question you get, should my child take the SAT and the ACT again? I, do you, are you penalized for some reason by a college if your student has taken it multiple times because obviously they're doing that so that they can get the better score. Correct. And no, that's an old myth. Uh, some parents still think from back in the 1980s that, oh, my kid shouldn't take it multiple times because it's a penalty. And that's totally, uh, that's totally incorrect. Uh, that, that's, old, that's an old way of thinking. Today, we encourage students to take the test as often uh, as they can and as really three times, four times even because the scores never go down. The, they can only improve their score. And the more times they take it, the more chances they have to improve their score. And do you have to submit the last two or something, or you can just submit your, well, your that's, highest? Well, that's the best part, is yeah. that colleges pledge that they will look at the highest scores only. Okay. We, we hope that that's what they do, and it they sounds do. like they, they do. do. Okay. So third, what are the differences oy, This is between regular sure. admission, rolling admission, Early action and early decision. I'm already sure. confused. <laughs> yeah, you have to learn the lingo a little okay. bit. Okay. Uh, and once again, we, we encourage all, all students, no matter independent school, public school, go and talk to their college counselor. There are good people at all these schools yeah. who can help answer these questions. Um, regular admission. There's a deadline. Let's say it's November 1st. And then the college tells the student sometime in the spring. That's the easy answer right there. Um, early action the deadline may be a little bit earlier. It may be October 15th, but then the student knows early on. The student may know before Christmas if he or she has been admitted to that college. Early decision is a little bit different though, because early decision is a binding contract. The child actually signs it. If I'm admitted to this school, I'm going to pledge to go. Uh, and so the child applies early, the school lets him or her know early, but if they get in, they have to go. So that's got to be a really, that's a really important decision to make. Okay, and now we've got two very similar questions from our Facebook viewers. Right. Um, and specifically, do, is it more important that a child take AP classes to make them appealing as opposed to worrying necessarily about their GPA? Because you could take regular classes and have a higher GPA yes. or take the AP classes and they're obviously harder but your G GPA might drop a little bit. Yes, and the, the, this, this is a very common question. It's a great question to ask. We always recommend that the student take the more challenging classes. Now, that's what colleges consider first. Grades in challenging college preparatory classes. That's what counts the most in a college application. Okay, and then what about that having that well-rounded student? For example, Jeannie asks, you know, what kinds of other things other than grades can you do? Sure, and that's or also that, that's also a great question. Uh, yes, you should, the student should not be there just from eight to three and then go home and do nothing. We always encourage sports. We encourage fine arts. We encourage community service. Uh, we encourage having a having a job, uh, or maybe if a student can't do that, let's say for example they have to care for their 92-year-old grandfather who lives with them, 
well, they can write an essay about that, about, hey, I didn't have time to go play soccer after school because I was the main caregiver for my grandfather. So students have the chance to explain in their essays why they pick certain activities or why they don't have the opportunity to pick certain activities. Ryan Riggs, thank you very much from Episcopal School of Thanks Jacksonville. Thanks for having me. Uh, absolutely. And if you missed any of this interview, we will post it in its entirety on newsforjax.com later this morning under the morning show section.